into my basketball. Every time I rock, man, this is how we rap and rock. Peace to my man, now we got the camera out. Every time I spit it, cross over the all right, hello everyone. This is Josh, also known as Yashu. We're just at another live edition for TLY Talks. Like, this is going to be episode 53 of the podcast. You know, shot at like 1990 Studios. And, you know, we'll definitely uh, tap in uh, right here and all that, you know. So, just, just checking to make sure everything is all said and all that. So, I'm just going to get the thumbs up right there. All right. And, you know, we're, we're going to get it started uh, right now, you know. So, we actually have one of like the most like dopest rising up and coming artists like in the game right now has performed like all over within Brampton within Vancouver like all over within many showcases she just dropped her uh, latest uh, EP well her latest project actually it's uh time and all that and you know she's been uh, making a wave uh, right now we have a uh, Loomis in the building how are you doing today I'm good what's up everyone <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's uh, been uh, dope to check you out for a bit, too, and, like, you know, ta like, tapping in, like, knowing more about your story and all that, and just seeing, like, some of the posts, like, on IG and all that, and it's, like, you know, pretty, like, interesting to see and all that, and, you know, hopefully everyone, like, tapping in uh, will get to know more about you for sure and all that, you know, so. For sure, for sure. Uh, likewise. So, you know, I wanted to figure out, like, where did you uh, grow up and what was, like, the environment like for you, like, growing up? Like, would you say it was, like, a very great childhood or would it be, like, very different? Uh, good question. I actually grew up in Vaughn. And my childhood was good. My parents always made sure that I had everything that I needed. Um, they always supported me and my goals. And um, growing up in Vaughn, it wasn't very diverse in terms of the culture, but um, I used to play soccer. I played piano, immersed myself into many different um, uh, events and sports. And my childhood, I would say, it was good. Oh, for sure. And I mean, with Vaughn, like, they just have, like, an interesting scene in terms of, like, a lot of stuff they have going on. You know, they have, like, Canada's Wonderland, Vaughn Mills Mall and all that. Like, a lot of, like, interesting stuff, like, dope communities and all that. Like, and I mean, with music, like, I've known, like, this other artist that's actually from Vaughn who has, like, sort of retired from music. Her name was, like, Alessandra and all that. And, you know, she told me more about her story about Vaughn and, like, how, like, there wasn't, like, really a scene, like, in Vaughn, like, at that time, too. So would you say it was, like, a very, like, different experience at that time? I would say I would agree. It wasn't it's not very immersed with the music culture. You kind of have to venture out to different venues, like in Toronto, to get to get noticed. Um, uh, yeah, it wasn't very um, music um, oriented. Oh no, for sure, and all that. And I mean, like when you were like immersing into the Toronto uh, music scene, like at the time too, like who were you like uh, listening to like that time to get to know more about like in, within the, in the scene in that sense. I would say that the the known most known artist I would say was Drake, uh, Justin Bieber. They all came up came up from different areas of the GTA and are now big known stars now. Um, and I have to give a shout out to my first promoter, Spark, who was able to give me my first uh, gig out in Toronto. And from there, it's been opening a lot of doors for me since then. Ah, uh, true. So you know, I want to know uh, more about that and like how did that like gig like come up by any chance and all that. I had reached out to a place called Bar Cathedral, and it's a bar downtown, but they told me to go to Hip Hop Is My Supermarket, and that's when Spark ran that account. So I sent him a DM, and from there, he asked me how many people I could bring on. I said about 15, and from there, um, I was able to get more shows, shows booked from him. Oh, uh, no, for sure, and all that. And, you know, as we kind of, like, have to, like, as we kind of, like, get more into that, like, later on in that sense, too, I want to, like, reset back that, reset back into, like, the whole, like, childhood phase and all that. So, like, what were you like from the start of birth until, like, adulthood and all that? Like, I know that you mentioned you've played piano, you've played sports and all that, but what other, like, key interests uh, did you have, like, growing up? Uh, I was very passionate about soccer. At one point, I wanted to be a professional soccer player, but I actually got a concussion, which made me not be able to play anymore. I'm a very hardworking per person, very motivated person, and always put others first before myself and just always driven to do different things um, and just go on different adventures and stuff. Oh, true. Nah, 100%. And, you know, when you got into music, like, what was, like, the first, like, introduction to music? Uh, I know you talked about, like, you know, listening to, like, Drake and Justin Bieber and all that and, you know, working with your, like, your first promoter and all that. But, like, what did you, like, listen to uh, growing up around the house and, like, what artists or genres, like, were you mainly, like, listening to and all that? A good question. Uh I listened to a lot of old school, um, old school reggae's like Biggie, Small, Tupac. They were mainly um, the songs I would listen to. They're very inspi inspi inspiring, inspiring, yeah. inspiring songs that I would listen to growing up. 
um, Tupac, Biggie, um, Missy Elliott, Drake, a lot of old type um, reggae stuff. Oh, for sure, and all that, and you know, even in that sense uh, too. Like, did your parents like play like certain like music around the house? Like, what did they like tend to like listen to uh, like back then? I would say that it was the same thing, like the, the old old reggae music, Biggie, uh, Tupac, uh, also Eminem, like even newer um, artists now too. Oh, no, for sure. And how did you uh, get into rapping and like making music in that sense? Um, when I was in high school, I had a not a great experience in my high school. And back when I was sixteen, I actually started writing um, writing songs, but they weren't they weren't really that good until I until I went home one morning and I um just typed on YouTube like a random hip hop beat. And from there, I just started writing like lyrics in my head that would flow nice together. And then I just started recording it. And then I showed my parents the song. They started, they actually liked the song. So I was like, this is something I could possibly do one day when I get older. Oh, for sure. And like within like your musical, like his uh, background and history and all that, um, like did you have like any like family that like kind of got into music and all that and or people who were like in bands and all that that, kind of like inspired you uh, for a little bit like in that sense i actually have a sister my sister's also uh she does song songwriting but doesn't um doesn't uh, perform but she does um s- lyrics and i also help her have her help me with um songs as well oh for sure and you know just getting more onto your inspiration um what inspired you to become like a rapper and an artist uh, i noticed that when i started writing um different songs that were um heavy hitting, hard hitting to the soul. I know people started to come up to me and say how my music helped me, how it helped, helped them. And from that moment, I just wanted to inspire people with my lyrics and let them know that's okay to not feel okay and, you know, life gets better and to always just keep going. No, nah, for sure, for sure. And in terms of, like, you know, getting into music, you know, building within your own sound and all that, who are you, like, influenced by, like, and who would you like to work with, like, musically someday and all that? I'm for sure there's a few of them. Uh, uh, Kendrick, Lamar, Kendrick Lamar is one of my top artists. Uh, J. Cole, uh, Drake, Eminem, uh, Missy Elliott. Um. A new artist, uh, too, in that sense. I didn't want to, like, backtrack. Are you, like, tapping in more of, like, you know, like, Lil Baby or Gunna or, like, Ice Spice or, like, Glorilla? Like, those types, those types of artists? Yeah, I like those. Like, I like them, too. I also like Lolo Brooks. True. Yeah, their style is very... um. They stay true to themselves, which 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 what I like most about these new artists. They don't try to be someone that they that they're not, yeah. even if they get hated for it. Not hundred percent too, and you know, just like even like shifting within like the focus within you know, women like in, in rap uh, nowadays too. Like, how do you even like uh, feel about it like right now? Because I remembered way back then there wasn't like really like a lot of like support for women getting into rap until you know Cardi B, Saweetie, Make the Stallion, like they sort of came by and then it opened, like, other lanes for, like, other women in rap to kind of take over and all that. And, you know, just, like, seeing it at, at first hand, like, how do you even, like, feel about it, like, right now? I feel like it's good. I feel like the females are really killing it and just staying true to themselves. And it doesn't matter if they get hated on. Like, Megan Thee Stallion, I know, gets hated on a lot. and But she still does her thing no matter what the haters say because she's just true to herself. That's what, um, you know, you have to be true to yourself in this in this industry. You can't try to per- fake a persona because... No one, will, no one will, will, will relate to you as much as we try to fake it. Yeah, no, I understand too. And do you feel like it's like the same within the industry, like in Toronto and all that, for like the women like in rap uh, that are like taking over right now, like with, with Rax, Tara Lord, you know, Goldie London, like all those other people? Yeah, I feel, yeah, I feel like they're also killing it too. Uh, also stay true to themselves. I really fuck with Rax and Tara Lord. Actually, they're uh, very true. dope, dope, dope artists as well. Uh, true, a hundred percent too. And, you know, getting back onto focus uh, right now, like, what do you bring to the table as, like, a rising artist in the Toronto GTA Canadian music, uh, music scene? And what makes you, like, different from the rest in order for, like, people to, like, tap in that sense? That's a good question. I would say the main thing is how authentic I am. I don't try to be someone that I'm not. My lyrics are about real-life events that I've been through and also events that I know other people can relate to. I try to spread a message to everybody and the... The impact that I've been giving, getting from people has been amazing and people haven't really been uh, messing with my vibe so far. Yeah, no, 100% too. And, you know, just to get more onto like the project uh, right now, you know, it's time, you know, I actually like the cover art for it because like it's like two chess pieces like on one table and all that. And, you know, like the layout, it's like, you know, very black and white, which is like very interesting too. Um, 
there was like some interesting uh, production as well from like a lot of like you know producers from like the states and all that which is like interesting to see and all that and i wanted to figure out like what was like that whole creative process and inspiration for that for sure i've been talking about dropping a project since 2019 but i haven't really found myself in in music until probably just recently i went to vancouver for four months and was able to spend uh, every day in the studio from the daytime to midnight and just working on different sounds and um that was like the whole inspiration. I always, I'm the type of person who's always very down on myself and hard on myself. So I felt like now it's my time to show people that what what I really got coming and stop messing with my potential. I feel like I have a lot. Yeah, no, I understand too. And, you know, just like even this whole like Vancouver situation too, because like you were in the city for like four months for like making music straight and like you were performing uh, shows out there and all that. So how was that experience like, you know, being in a specific city, like traveling around and like just like even being in the studio for a bit too, like what did you notice from that versus like, you know, being in Toronto and all that? It was very dope. I feel like the I met a lot of great, amazing people in Vancouver now that I can really call them like my best friends now. And they really actually helped me change up my sound. I used to be just full on rapping, but now I wanna um do like singing now. I I change up how I um give off a lyric and stuff and um it's definitely different. I feel like the artists in Vancouver support each other more and always want to see other people win. And in Toronto, I feel like there's so much um, animosity and everyone is just trying to outdo everyone else. Uh, true. And, you know, like even from like a first time experience, experience, like have you noticed this, like, you know, when going to events or like when linking up with people, like the whole like animosity between like other artists like, within Toronto? Actually, I haven't noticed it, but I've heard a lot of, about that. But for the shows that I've done... Um, Everyone has been very supportive towards me. Just when it comes with collaborations, everyone just acts like they're on top of or better than. Yeah, no, 100% too. And, you know, just getting back onto like topic uh, for a bit too, you know, like what is your creative process like when making like song and all that? And like what would like a day in making or recording like music be like for you like in that sense? Uh, The process I usually, I tend to usually write in the, in the midnight from like maybe from 12 to 3 sometimes in the morning because I feel like my thoughts are, less uh, are less active at in the nighttime i'm able to just focus on just writing songs and then i find beats on on youtube or now i'm actually starting to learn to make my own beats that way i have more of creative flow to my work and then i just try to uh the lyrics that i write down i try to just rap over it on a different beat and sometimes they they work well or at times i have to change up my my lyrics yeah no for sure and all that and you know like in most like cases too like with studios and all that like it's like a whole like different process and all that like some people like they kind of blaze up or like they kind of like drink to be in that element and all that in other cases too like they just play with like the lighting and all that or they have a policy where you know only certain amount of people or only just like no people at all and all that (laughs) so they'd be like in the studio and all that my bad on that but um just like in your sense like how is your studio vibe not uh like in that sense too like what do you like mainly do uh, in the studio, I like I like the light to be dark, so I can't really be seen by other people. And um, when it comes to people, I don't like people really being in in the studio when I'm recording. Uh, and I drink tea and water as I'm going over each um, verses. Yeah, no, for sure, and all that. And who do you like when you're in the studio too? Like, what do you look for like in an engineer or producer and all that? Like to kind of get that sound that you know you're looking for, like in that sense. So, uh, someone who can give me honest feedback about my work because I've been in other studios where they just say it's okay, but even though I know in my heart that it's not okay, they just don't give the right enough uh, feedback. The studio I go to now, it's he's honest with how I pr- produce a a lyric and gives the best advice that I need to help me. Yeah, no, for sure, and all that, and I think it's just like you know, like even like looking for uh, producers too, and all that. So. Like, I know with some of the songs, like, they're, like, used from, like, other, like, artists as well, too. So, have you ever, like, managed to, like, look for, like, a certain producer or, like, a certain style that might fit, uh, like, your style, like, you know, like, locally, like, in that sense? Uh, I, I tend to, I like going and using many different producers. Um, I had a producer in Vancouver that really did an amazing job on my song, Roller Coaster, And I was able to get, get the, perf- the perfect sound that I needed for that song to come out on top. Yeah, no, for sure, for sure. And, you know, just getting back on to, like, on topic for a bit, too. Um, How did you get your uh, stage name, uh, Little Miss? <laughs> uh, of course, it's not really a backstory to this, to this uh, particular name. I had came up with this name when I was very young, when I was 16. Um, for some reason, I just came up with Little Miss, and then 
as I got older, the name just stuck with me. Sure, for sure. And have you ever felt like it kind of like stood out like within like the rest and all that too? Because I know some people like when they have like Lola in their names, it's like, you know, little like dog and all that or little like Bob or little this and all that. So have you ever felt like, you know, sometimes too, it could be like an issue or if you want to like transition like out of that name or do you feel like it matches like perfectly with what you're going on right now? I feel like right now, I, I feel like right now it fits me good. I feel like it's, it's very unique and nobody has that name. It's just very different. And, um, but in the future, I definitely am open to changing it one day. Yeah, no, for sure and all that. And, you know, getting more onto the whole, like, motor story, too. So, like, after, like, even that first show that happened, like, what was it like, you know, like, going to, like, from different show to different show? And how was it, like, interacting with, like, different audiences in that sense? For sure. The first show that I went to, I, it was actually one of my biggest shows that I did because, uh, before I did open mic nights and just for fun and the, the crowd liked my music there too. And for the first show I was very, very nervous, didn't know what I was doing. And even though I, I did, I did okay. I still felt like I could have done better, um, more interactive with the crowd and just being given more energy. And then as I started doing more and more shows, I felt like that, the energy progressed and I've had people even tell me that, wow, like you did uh, like your stage presence has definitely changed over the years that you've done shows. And so, so far the shows have been really amazing so far. And the crowds have been um, really rocking with my music that I give because it's just real music that I like to give my audience. Yeah, no, 100% too. And, you know, when you perform on stage or like when you like hop on the stage, like do you have any like rituals like you kind of do like before you go on stage or is there like a process like needed in order to have a good like little miss set like in that sense too? Good question. I, I usually take a shot or two before I go on stage just to help me loosen up. Um, and when I usually, usually when I do that, the show usually does does good. Yeah, no, exactly. No, I definitely know what you mean too. Um, I saw like this interview from like uh, Rax like a while back, and like I remembered like before she would go like perform on stage and all that, she would actually like sleep and all that too to kind of get in that element and like be in that mood too and all that and. There's actually, like, this other uh, rapper um, in that sense, too. Like, uh, a U.S. Uh, rapper. Um, it might be a little mundane in that sense, too. <laughs> but um, this guy named uh, Young Chris. So before he, like, performs and all that, you know, he has to go use the bathroom, like, in, like, another way and all that to <laughs> kind of, <laughs> like, get to kind of get that element out to kind of perform and all that. And for some people, like, it does kind of work out and all that. For others, it's like you know, get your drink on or you kind of yeah. get your nap on or get your food on and, like, you know, you get to go and all that, you know? For sure, yeah. Yeah. Definitely nah. drinking helps me, for sure. Nah, for sure. And, you know, when you're in the crowd and all that, like, what do you, t like, tend to see, like, when you perform and all that? Like, how do you, like, how, what do you notice like, when you see, like, people, like, looking looking at you, like, performing and all that? Do you see, like, certain, like, emotions that kind of come by and all that? Or uh, For sure. For some of the songs I do, I have a song called Roller Coaster, and that's, the song is more on the low side, but also very energetic. And I see people always, uh, you know, putting their hands up in the air for that every time that song comes on all the time. And I always get good feedback when I come off the stage. And I was like, they're the song that stuck out for them the most. Yeah, no, 100% too. And like, you know, like after like a performance and all that, like have people like ever come up to you, like, you know, when you were like just at the bar or just like by the side and all that. And they told like how you were like a good performer, or, like how like that song like meant for you, like in that sense too. For sure, yeah. There's been a couple of times when I come off the stage and uh, they always shake my hand and say that was really good or uh, keep going, I have a lot of potential. And sometimes they even ask to collab with me as well. Oh, sure. No, 100% too. And, you know, just like even in that aspect too, how is it like, you know, performing all over, like especially like performing like all over Toronto, like all over like Canada and all that, like in Vancouver, because you don't see like a lot of like up and coming Toronto artists, like even going to like those areas, like, in Vancouver or in yeah. Ottawa or in Montreal unless you're doing showcases for like, with like Freddie Fame or with other people and all that. Like how is that progression like in Divergent, that aspect of music? Uh, the progression has been amazing. Um, my first show in Vancouver is actually through one of my friends that he's also a promoter. Um, and he, also, he reached out to me and asked me to come over to Vancouver. I went there in March. It was like a really good show. A lot of, a lot of amazing uprising talents in Vancouver and, uh, a lot of collabs I have coming up with a few of them from Vancouver as well. No, 100%, uh, 100% too. And like for the shows that you've performed at, have you ever managed to like get paid for those shows and all that? Or is it like still like in that process uh, right now in order to get paid? 
Uh, for some of the shows, um, I get paid for. Um, the one I did in Brampton, they paid me um, for a show that that was actually a free one of the one of a free shows that I was um, asked to be on. Oh no, that's like a win right right there and all that you know because yeah. it is important for you know artists to get like paid to perform and all that you know it's not like you know you pay to like play and all that you know it's like yeah. you'd rather get paid to kind of do what you love and all that and like it kind of works out and I think with some prom- uh, for some promoters too it's like you know finding like the right money to uh, finding like the right budget too because there's a lot to go like when it comes to performing at a show and all that you know you're paying your bar people you're paying like the venue you're paying. Like the artists, you're paying your DJ, you're paying your dancers or all these other people too. And, or you're paying like the door person as well too and like security as well. So it's like a whole big like mm-hmm. process right there and all that. And it's exactly, just like, yeah. like knowing like when the budget right and all that. Like I know with some shows too, it could be like a chaos like right there and all that. And then like with other shows, it kind of becomes like better and all that. So it's like. For sure, yeah. 100%. For sure. And, you know, just like within immersing in the Toronto GT music scene, like how was it like, you know, like even like immersing uh, right uh, now, uh, right now, like within those scenes, was there ever like, ever like, <laughs> sorry, was there ever any opportunities for you to branch out and interact with like many artists like uh, within, within like the scene and all that? Like, I know you were like performing with Spitty like a while back, you know, you were doing like other shows and all that linked up with like Rax and like Sarah Lord and all that, so. For sure. Um, there's been many opportunities for, I've met a lot of amazing people at different shows that I've went to. Uh, we talked about doing many collaborations, but um, everyone's so busy with their own schedule that it's very hard to link up with people now to do music. But so far, um, yeah, I've met amazing a lot of amazing talents in Toronto. Yeah, no, hundred percent too. And you know what I've noticed about you, like what I've noticed about you too, and all this, like you know when I check out like the stories and all that, you know, it's like you reposting like a lot of like local or up and coming artists like in the game and all that, you know, showing support, showing love and all that. Uh, usually some artists too, like they kind of do that. Others, it's like they post like within like inspiration too. So how do you even like value like the importance of like supporting your friends or supporting like local instead of promoting like or supporting like, you know, like the mainstream or already up artists and all that? It's a good question. It's it's a huge thing for me. I try to uh, do those posts like at least every couple of weeks, shout out new different people and people have actually respected me a lot because of that because it's not very... It's not a very big thing that people do because everyone just wants to race to the top. Or as I'm, I want to see everybody win and, and be successful. And I shout out my friends, people that I don't even know on Instagram. And um, it has been very, it's something that I like doing because I just, everyone deserves to get recognitions for their talent. Yeah, no, 100% too. And I know with um, some people too, it's like, you know, like supporting like local uh, before global and all that. And I do feel like it should change for like, even like in Toronto too, like as you said, you know, can't be like this whole like screw face like capital type thing you know we have to kind of exactly, work yeah. together to kind of be within that element too and you know even aside from that how do you even like feel about the toronto or like gta canadian music scene uh, right now do you feel that there should be some changes on where like those she- scenes should go to or do you feel like it's like find the way to uh, the, the main thing i would say is the, the support the support is something that's lacking and um i feel like everyone everyone has a lot of talent but it's also it's also good to support other artists too, not just, you know, put yourself on this high pedestal and there's other people, other people that need the recognition as well and not just, um, yeah, the animosity and the support is something that I feel like should change and everyone should support other people instead of putting them down. Yeah, no, I understand too. And like even with certain opportunities uh, going on, like I do feel like there should be like a lot of like importance within like the, infra- the infrastructure, the support system, like everything else too. Because I mean, we've had like Rolling Loud, we've had, you know, DJ academics, we've had, like, other people, like, come in, try to help out, too. And, like, even, like, within those aspects, do you feel like it has, like, helped uh, Toronto a lot, or is there more that, like, needs to be done in that sense? I'm sure. I feel like people are taking Toronto a bit more seriously because of the Rolling Loud, and they have a lot of different artists, um, a lot of local artists on the stage. I know Tara Lord was on Rolling Loud, and she did an amazing job on there. And I feel like, yeah, um, Toronto's starting to get looked at a lot more because of all um, all these festivals that they're putting on for us now. Ah, uh, no, for sure, and all that. And, you know, we just have um, some of these uh, questions uh, left in that sense, too. You know, for people that want to get to know more about you and all that, you know, because, like, there are, like, people watching that might want to tap in or, like, others, you know, from different profiles, like, from your profile, from my profile, that want to know more. Um, name free songs in your catalog that you would like to recommend for any person that has not heard about you before or that would like to know more from you, like, in that sense. For sure. Um, I would say the first song would be Find My Way. 
a roller coaster and balling just because the vibe of a balling is very different. Um, it's more like um, more like catching a beat than the roller coaster and find my way. It's more of telling people to always just keep going and never hold yourself back. And even though days are bad, eventually days will get better. Yeah, no, for sure. And, you know, I'm definitely going to put that, like, on the playlist that, you know, I usually uh, have for, like, people to uh, tap in. Okay. Trying to, like, promote that more and all that so that, you know, people can, like, kind of, like, get to know certain people on the platform or artists that I've linked up with or even, like, you know, artists, like, in the scene right now and all that. So I'll definitely, mm-hmm. like, add those, like, free and all that, you know, so. And do you have any, like, regrets in your life overall or do you, like, regret nothing and all that? I have no regrets in my life. I feel like... um Everything that has happened has been either a lesson or a blessing, and you can't uh, hold yourself back by going to the past. I know I've been, I've been. There's been times where I was down on myself, but I have to just keep going and always know that there's better ahead than what's back. That that what's back there. Yeah, no, hundred percent too. And you know, even like with you dealing with your story for a bit too, because I've listened to like some of the songs too. Like the there is like a lot of like emotion going for like a lot of challenges pains breakups like a whole lot like a, a whole lot of other stuff sorry about that. <laughs> yeah. but um like even like it could like lead to a deterioration within mental health but like with you it's like the music is like a therapy or like as a way to cope with like the mental health and all that too so even like aside from music like what were like some other ways that you've tried to cope with like your mental health and all that and in order to kind of remain like healthy like in that sense a good question i, I would honestly say music is the, the biggest thing but also um, I'm um, filled with a lot of people who support me. I have a lot of great support systems. My family is one of them, and I have a lot of great friends that support me. And then if I if I need anything, I go to them and talk to them about my problems. And I try not to let what, what has happened in the past uh, get me down because I know that there's better ahead and better coming, and God doesn't put you through things unless he knows that you can get past them. Yeah, no, for sure and all that, and... Do you have any other like plans uh, for this year in terms of like music or creative projects and so forth? Uh, right now, I won't. I went right now. I'm dro- I'm gonna be dropping a single with my friend um, Isaac from Vancouver, hoping in November. And then I'm, right now, I'm actually working on another project right now. Ah, uh, sure, and all that. Uh, are there gonna be like any like visuals uh, from uh, its time and all that? Like, I know like there should be like some visuals too because I feel like. When I do look at look at some of the songs too and all that or like listen to them, I do feel that there should be some music videos like coming in and all that and you know those definitely yeah. And I think uh, you're doing one with uh, Pasalo uh, Films, right? I am, yeah, um, for Baldwin actually, oh, yeah, true. yeah. So I guess like it'll be like definitely like lit like when like you know we see like some like the behind the scenes and like all the other stuff too, like even like when the video drops too, you know. So, yeah, very uh, excited to work on that one with him actually. It's gonna be very dope. Ah, uh, for sure. And uh, do you have any like closing uh, remarks you'd like to say? Uh, for sure. First, I want to say thank you for having me on the podcast. I really appreciate it. And uh, if you have goals and dreams and you want to follow them, make sure you follow them. Don't let anybody stop you from um, doing what you want to do. Forget the haters and just keep going. No, for sure. And, you know, where can they uh, follow you on IG? I think you follow me on Instagram at Little Miss Raps underscore music. And Spotify and Apple Music is also Little Miss Raps. Oh, sure, and all that. So, uh, Little Miss, you know, thank you uh, for uh, coming by, like, on the platform and all that, too. You know, it was, like, a pleasure, like, having you on, like, speaking, like, more about your story and everything else, too, and all that. And, you know, this is Josh, also known as Yashu. You know, thank you for tapping into the live stream uh, right now for this very dope you know, interview slash podcast and all that. You know, I'm trying to do, like, more of these, like, if everyone's, like, uh, down to set this up and all that. And... Yeah, it'll be a uh, little. You'll definitely uh, watch it uh, right now. Like it'll still be like viewed like on YouTube and all that. You just have to kind of like scroll down and then you kind of find find it right there. It'll also be on the podcast uh, playlist as well too. And then the audio and everything else so uh, will be uh, dropping soon on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Buzzsprout, and much more and all that. You know, always like kind of give your review on that. You know, definitely tap in and like you know definitely tap into Little Miss with her music and all that. You know. One of, like, the best rising artists uh, right now and all that, you know, so. And, you know, this is Josh, also known as Yashu, episode 53 of TOY Talks. You know, thank you for tuning in to the second edition of the live stream, too. I really appreciate that. We're signing off right now.